Hello fellow teammates, welcome to the I in Team, your place to increase the quality of your gameplay. In today's video, we'll be reviewing the newly released vehicle in GT Online, the Class A Granger 3600 LX. We'll be discussing how to unlock the trade price, the customization options, testing its durability, and letting you know if it's worth your time and money. We'll also be showing you a massive flaw we uncovered during our durability test, so please stick around as this will probably be a determining factor on purchasing this vehicle. And of course, please drop a like if you go on to enjoy this video, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure notifications are turned on so you don't miss any future content. Now the Granger 3600LX, which is based on the 11th generation Chevrolet Suburban, can be purchased from Southern San Andreas Super Autos for $1,380,000, or with a trade price of $1,035,000. To unlock the trade price, you have to complete 5 security contracts as a leader. Now anything priced over a million should have a decent amount of customization, so let's hop into the auto shop part of the garage and check it out. And we were pleasantly surprised. The Granger has a decent amount of customization options, not as much as we were hoping for, but just enough to make it stand out. So we'll be skipping over the performance features as we're sure you're already familiar with them. And as you can see here, there's only a few bumper options, and unfortunately there aren't any actual bumper variations inside this category, only bars. There are nine different exhaust options. Oval bore exhaust, slanted bore, double side exit. I think we're gonna go with the dual oval bore exhaust on this one. We have eight different styles for the hood. Street, vented, striped, carbon stripe, carbon vented. We're not keen on any of these, so we'll keep it stock for now. The Granger also has access to the all Monte Tech upgrades, so you'll be able to add the remote control unit and missile lock-on jammer. N-O-S-E accessories. Nice. We'll definitely have to add the snorkel. We'll be doing some testing on that later on. Primary weapons. We're adding the mounted machine guns. Gotta check the damage on those. And of course, we have to add the slick mines. Those are a lot of fun. We're also adding the light bar so we can do some testing on that as well. And now to select our crew color. Perfect. Side note, this color will resemble the one used for GTA's Bane Cache in the top right corner if you add it over Chrome. Here's the hex number in case anyone wants to try it out. Now on to the most important part of the customization, deliveries. <laughs> Alright, all jokes aside, Rockstar actually did a pretty good job with deliveries on this SUV. There's something for everyone. This Granger has 13 livery options. Two different styles of pinstripes, racing stripes, off-road hero options, and camo. There's also some racing liveries and a style I'm sure you're all familiar with, the Sacenta Nove. All right, now let's get this SUV on the road and see how this upgraded version handles. Now, not much was expected on the Granger speed as it's an SUV, but the top speed on this thing is incredibly slow. I'm sure some of you have heard that the OG Granger, the 3500, which you can find off the street, has a higher top speed. And yes, that's unfortunately true. We know that's a little upsetting, but it's not much of a surprise with how things have been going lately in GTA Online. Handling is also a bit rough. Not as smooth as a Jubilee, the other SUV in this DLC. As far as off-roading, it can tackle most obstacles with ease. However, the bar on the front bumper can get in the way, so we suggest leaving it off when using the Granger out of the city. Slight inclines, like the hills right outside the city, are also not a problem. So will have the power and speed to get you where you're going. Now all that power is lost when it's on the mountain ranges. Here we're going full throttle and it's hardly moving up the slope. So this is definitely an off-road vehicle for the city. This is not a vehicle you want if you're going off-roading through Blaine County. And as we're tumbling back down to reality, we can see the light bar does work, so that's a huge plus. And onto the snorkel. Now it's always a toss-up if these work. They're functional for some, and just cosmetic in others. And in this case, it's just an accessory. Now it will be able to survive smaller bodies of water, as it's a raised vehicle, but it will definitely be destroyed if submerged. Now there's a couple unique features to this Granger. First one being it can hold up to 8 players. 4 on the inside, and 4 on the outside. The ones on the outside are able to use assault rifles and light machine guns while the vehicle is being driven, which makes the Granger perfect for drive-bys and assaulting other players. However, the driver needs to be careful as the players riding on the running boards can be knocked off and killed in collisions. Now the machine guns take roughly 8 seconds to destroy a vehicle, which is about average when compared to the other weaponized vehicles in this DLC. Another neat feature is that the machine guns are able to track what's in front of them. This is a very handy feature as objects like the compact cars and bikes would normally be too low to hit. If you watch the white dot, you'll see how it's pulled to the object in front of them. Pretty cool. On to the armor. 
The armor on this vehicle does give you a higher resistance to explosives, but don't plan on staying in one place too long. As you can see here, it only took a couple of shots from a grenade launcher before it was destroyed. This will be the same for the RPG and sticky bombs. And it'll roughly take 11 oppressor Mark II rockets before it's destroyed, but that's not something you'll need to be worried about if you have the missile lock-on jammer installed. The Granger comes stock with bullet-resistant windows, which is pretty cool. These windows are able to withstand 15 rounds from most firearms before being shattered. Now here is the Granger's massive flaw we told you about earlier. When testing out the bullet-resistant windows, we discovered the frames between the vehicle's windows lack any collision detection, which makes it easy to shoot out anyone inside of the vehicle. We took a few shots into the frame from the driver's side, and if you look at the indicator on the screen, you'll see exactly when the passenger window was shattered. Once we get inside and look around, you can see all other windows are still intact. We hope that Rockstar fixes this soon, but until then, you definitely want to keep this in mind when driving this vehicle. So is it worth it? Yes and no. This one really depends on your gaming style. If you have cash to burn, are a collector, or a fan of the new Amani tech, then this may be the way to go. This is definitely not a must-have for a solo player. You probably won't be pulling this out of your garage too often in terms of jobs or missions. There are several other better options, like the Jubilee we mentioned earlier. It's really hard for us to support purchasing this vehicle at this time, especially with the fact that you can get shot through the frames. Maybe once it's patched. Maybe. If you're strapped for cash, the Granger 3500 is just as good, and for a fraction of the price. And it's faster. So that's everything you need to know about the Granger 3600LX. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this vehicle. Are you going to pick this up now, or are you going to wait until it goes on sale? Let us know what you guys think in the comments. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. And if you felt this was helpful, please drop a like and subscribe. Also, feel free to check out more of our videos for additional tips. And as always, thank you for allowing us to help you become the I-N team. Till next time, teammates.